see that Part of me with the safe, no, I need that See a smile on your face, yeah, I need that No, I'm trying to get the cake that can take me to a place That'll make me feel safe, I don't need that Tell me about the way you felt I can tell you about the things that I said myself I got a lot of things sitting on my shelf Wait a couple days, you can tell I need help now Yeah, I'm falling face first in Hello, everybody. How's it going? Good to see you guys here. Hey, Mark McGarry. How are you? Uh, me too. We've all been waiting for this damn day to come, right? April Fool's Day. <laughs> they better not, you know. Well, today I'm going to have a guest and um, she's a researcher. She this, I mean, Well, that's her hobby is researching. She's a trauma nurse. Her name is Dana, but she goes by Rotting Jewels on her YouTube channel. Um, I'm going to bring her up that way. I don't sit here and stutter step because I suck at this. <laughs> so this is Dana and she is Hi. going to school us or, you know, we're actually just going to have a conversation and we're, cause she's kind of new in this territory as far as the, the Mormonism connection, the Mormon connection, but it's very interesting and it paints a very, the ugly picture that we, we see on the headlines every damn day. <laughs> So, everybody, let's welcome Dana. How, how are you doing? <laughs> Hi, thank you for having me. Um, yes, my name is Dana. Uh, I'm an ICU nurse. And uh, it's interesting because when I first started making little threads on Twitter, and I didn't realize that you could make a thread. And so <laughs> I was making separate posts and people said, hey, stop doing that. Make a thread. This is how you do it. It was because it. <laughs> of the situation with David Leavitt and Nicholas Rossi slash Oliverdi and all those million last names. Sure. And so once I dug into that and saw there's something very wrong here, and mm -hmm. that was my introduction to Tim Ballard because I was on the road during uh, – COVID that whole time I was traveling. So I didn't know about OUR. I didn't know about any of the crazy conspiracies. Yeah. And so when I came <laughs> home, you know, I had family members that were like real big into QAnon and Tim Ballard. And I'm like, <laughs> what the hell happened no, while I was true. gone? Like, have you guys been outside? Mm -hmm. And once I started digging into it and I was like, oh, this is extremely dark. And I veered away from that and started my research into the process church of the final judgment. Uh, and that is the modern day best friends animal society, which is the biggest animal charity rescue uh, in the nation, but it is located uh, in Kanab, Utah. Uh, I am very well versed in best friends and all of their activities. Uh, and I'm still mm -hmm. working on debunking their history. Um, but I know also mm -hmm. you want to talk about how Tavistock and ultimately Esalon plays into this too, uh, yeah. because this is my, just so people understand where I'm coming from, because I haven't been following the case since it initially <laughs> happened good. when I used I to listen to true crime. I'm bringing the history to it. I'm showing people that we don't we're never going to be able to figure out how the hell we got here unless we know what happened from the beginning. And it's very painstakingly time consuming, but you find a lot of fruit and you find more and more and more connections. And even some of the stuff you've shown me, like that stuff with Tavistock, I'm just like, well, that makes sense because... You know, some people, their heads exploded when I showed them that uh, Shalom worked for Esalon as a sex therapist, you know, and, and it's I like that's her, social engineering. Her middle name, I mean, her middle name, her maiden name is Eastwood. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if that's related to Clint Eastwood or I don't know. That that was just something. because I looked. Uh, you know, all these people are freaking connected. And I'm just like, wait, wait, wait. It just, I don't know. 
there's so many things. Like I just learned that John Huntsman, he's a Mormon. He ran for, uh, I don't know all the things because I just got into him, but he's a Mormon millionaire, billionaire. Um, his brother, I believe, is actually suing the Mormon church for back pay and tithe, uh, tithing or whatever. And John Huntsman was found, his name was found in Jeffrey Epstein's little back, black book. So, you know, I'm just like, oh. uh, you just can't have this many idiots and weird people. And like you said, I didn't know all this because, you know, in the beginning, I mean, I'm just, I'm working my way from the bottom up and it seems like you're going from the top down and it just is really connecting for me. I didn't know that most, if not all of these cult movements are actually intelligence. I don't know all the words, so I'm not good at all that, but they're, they're experiments. Basically, you're just experimenting on and it's like maybe this is what I'm thinking. I'm thinking that maybe Tylee and JJ and Charles and Tammy's murders kind of, you know, Chad and Lori become a scapegoat to some degree because it's like a distraction. Something else bigger is going on and it, it's crazy. And then you also have, uh, Ru oh my God, Jody Hildebrandt, Ruby Frankie that I did not expect to come out. I don't think any of us did, but it did. And it showed its ugly, <laughs> reared its ugly head. And we've learned a lot from that uh, with the demon stuff and and just horrific stuff. And then you have the Hamblin case, which is the past, right? Well, it could still be going on because these people are never brought to justice. They all evade justice. And it just, and then the CIA actually came out with the conspiracy theory term <laughs> you know they have the the answers for everything as with um, you know along with everything that they're doing and it's just a gaslight people and and just no you're not really seeing that <laughs> uh -uh. Well, that's <laughs> what false here. memory syndrome is that's yeah. what false memory syndrome is that's what the false memory syndrome foundation is um you know obviously that little schizo clip was you know showing mm. people it's not real. <laughs> yeah, it's still touted as yeah. science, uh, but it's not science. And yeah. uh, it's very fascinating for people who don't know uh, the girl boss who's out here preaching the great truths of the False Memory Syndrome Foundation, Elizabeth Loftus. Uh, she actually really made her name and staked her claim in Utah, uh, discrediting one of the victims of Ted Bundy which is fascinating. She, yeah, she has a stellar record. Yeah, she uh, also silenced the victims of Ghislaine Maxwell and Jeffrey Epstein. So she's a I real hellscape. Who, I wonder who Chad Dable's experts are going to be because there's seven experts that are going to testify. John DeLynn is, uh, he's the guy, he's an ex-Mormon who has a podcast that's real popular, especially with all these crimes happening. Um it's called, uh, oh my gosh, <laughs> what, what is wrong with me? Um, the Mormon stories, it's Mormon stories podcast. He had on there. Um, I don't know how to say the dude's name. Uh, Massimo Intervigne or whatever. Oh, Massimo Intervigne. Yeah. And I'm just like, I remember seeing that years ago, whenever I was kind of just dabbling into the whole idea of, could this be, satanic ritual abuse could this be that that you know i don't know i'm just here i'm just unsuspecting i'm a clean slate and i'm just drawing information everywhere and just seeing not what i can stick to it but what what this is there's no it does no justice for the victims or anybody else for that matter to like throw a cult leader tag on chad and Lori or they're trying to be prophets. That is not at all what is going on. And I wish people would wake up and just realize this because it doesn't do. Yeah. It's sensational. Cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It gets it right. A look, but it does not tell the story of the victims. It does not do them justice. It doesn't bring it to them. And, and so as much as I'd want to pin everything on Chad and Lori for what I believe they did and what one has already been convicted of, 
I don't want to throw a title or anything on them that is not actually theirs, you know? So, and, and Chad Daybell, he was, uh, he's a Mormon author. Um, yeah, he owned a publishing company. He's just doopity do. Okay. He's, he looks like freaking everybody can comment. <laughs> I mean, a thumb, a toe. He looks like a toad. He looks like a, uh, Dilbert. He looks like family guy, Peter. Um, he just is do to do. I mean, just gross. And <laughs> he just isn't smart enough to do this. He said it himself, you know, I mean, they, they just, and they tell them themselves through the things that they do say, yes, but they do. Chad Daybell would, he used to speak at these book of Mormon evidence conferences, right? The, uh, this one conference called the firm expo. He used to speak on the same circuit as Tim Ballard. I mean, the, there's a guy who's involved in this case. I mean, we have, uh, interview footage of him from body camp, you know, from FOIA request, um, of Jason Mao. Jason Mao is a paramilitary trooper, blah, 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 blah. You know, they go to the scene, they go to where the, um, where the, uh, natural disaster is at, which bothers me. I've learned that through, you know, mm -hmm. research and the, all the stuff around Tim Ballard. So it just, I don't know. It, it, there's too many parallels. The, and I know that that's connected for sure. I mean, even the guy, Tom Harrison, that you've sent me a couple clips, you know, the newspaper clips about Tom Harrison, you know, I mean, he's in all these. He's connected to Jody Hildebrandt, which is Ruby Frank, you know, that whole thing. Um, as their therapist, you know, and they started Eternal Core, um, where Tim Ballard spoke there. And, and so did Jody. And anyways, then you have, um, from eternal core on, where was I going with that? <laughs> I don't really remember. Um, too many things in this noggin of mine. So let's just keep talking. <laughs> That's okay. But, oh, Tom so, Harrison. Um, Sorry. <laughs> no, you're Tom. okay. So Tom, and he's also, you know, there's from the civil lawsuits filed against Tim Ballard. Uh, we've learned that they were meeting at Thanksgiving point, Utah. Uh, there's a theme park there. You know, it's just weird because Sherston, her name is Sherston Stockwell in the report or in her, in the civil lawsuit uh, to Davis County uh, prosecutors. Um, she has revealed that, you know, she, was taken to Thanksgiving Point, Utah with Tim Ballard, Ken Krogh, uh, Tom Harrison, and Hugh Vell. Hugh Vell owns this big ranch. And anyways, so they're all millionaires except for, well, Tim's a millionaire off of everybody's bucks. So, yeah. but, you know, so, but they go there and they told her about that they have special insight into the second coming. And that is all this is. The ushering in the second coming, I'm just like, uh-huh. And so I used to think that it was like literally what it says in, you know, what scripture says and all that. And then I'm like, uh, no, it just is, it's just a code word or a dog whistle um, to all their other, whomever. It's the dog whistle, kind of like the constitution is hanging by a thread is to Glenn Beck um, to usher in the new world order so to speak, and I'm just being point frank, you know, right there. It's really, it's so uncomfortable to freaking talk about because it's weird, but it's not my weird, you know, it's theirs. It's, so. it, it is theirs, but I mean, I think that you make some really great points. I think you mentioning, you know, what they call the second coming, my consistent theme that I see just from my studies of the process, best friends, whatever you want to call them, is they are, their goal is chaos and they are the accelerationists. They want to bring about the end of humanity. And so mm -hmm. that's, I see all of this as basically like global death cult, like this is what mm -hmm. they're doing. Uh, but everybody has a role to play. And so whether mm -hmm. it's 
Chad and Lori, and I'm saying this in a respectful way because it's just a simplified way to say it, yeah. useful idiots, unfortunately, mm -hmm. right? Where it's somebody, because there always has to be someone that's going to go up on the chopping block. Things yeah. get too hot. Someone has to go up on the chopping block. Okay. Um, and I think that you bringing up the interview with Massimo Intravigne is incredibly important because I believe it was last year, and I, I think it was in Arizona, actually. It might have not been oh, Utah. Um, he came <laughs> out with a big statement and said that uh, the confession is eternal and sacred and divine and so you should not report any sort of abuse oh yeah and so the mormon church i mean they had a whole thing where they won uh against one of the, okay there's this uh case in arizona and it, it made it on vice news you know i mean oh yeah all kinds of news outlets and everything and you learned about how the bishop didn't report the dad paul adams was his name he he offed himself in jail um and and so like and he worked for homeland security as did tim allegedly and so there's all these things going on and and all this abuse and everything and it's not being reported then the the little girls are placed in two other homes right well she or she or they all decided to sue the church you know, for not reporting. And I just, I, I don't really know the details of that right offhand, but I've read it, kept up with it. And basically the church won. I mean, it's so gross when they're just like, they, but it's because they of people like Massimo. It's yes. because of people like Massimo, yes. because Massimo Intervigne is a Vatican intelligence asset. Which is that weird. dude it is very weird. He is a Catholic extremist who literally dresses up like a vampire. I'm not kidding. With, I have pictures on my Twitter. Dude green, is a complete right? whack job. Yeah, he's very extreme, but he wields a lot of power. He, um, <sighs> you know, he's helped protect one of the most notorious yeah. pedophiles within the Catholic Church, uh, Father Marikai. Uh, mm -hmm. He has supported no reporting whatsoever of any type of sexual abuse. He paints anything that would protect victims, especially within religious institutions. He paints that as anti-cult activity, as fascism, even though he's literally a right-wing uh, Catholic extremist fascist, in that's my personal awesome. opinion. But if you mm -hmm. read what he says, that's what he is. Um, and so mm -hmm. that's where, and I'm not saying that the upper echelon of the LDS doesn't have that type of power because I do believe that they do. But oh, when God, you have yeah. the backing of an institution like the Vatican, you're pretty much untouchable at that point. Uh, you're let me tell you right now, I have pictures of the Pope shaking hands with M. Russell Ballard, not related to Tim Ballard. Wink, wink. I don't know. <laughs> and you also allegedly, I mean, yeah, right till we find it. <laughs> And then there's, uh, what's the other one? Uh, Thomas Monson was the prophet before Nelson. Um, then there's one with Nelson Oaks and, and M. Russell Ballard with the, they're all there. Okay. They, they, they all rub elbows and they're just like, well, how are we going to dupe them more? <laughs> you know, I mean, it's just dupery. It, it's bamboozle <laughs> to the nth degree and they exploit everything. And I, yeah. Okay. I exploit. I mean, I just, they get on my nerves. I can't stand them. <laughs> they well, drive me crazy. People need to understand that. And I, and I'm not saying that people here don't, it's right. just, this is such a massive network. And like you said, I view all of these groups as basically what you see, whether it's uh, Chad and Lori's cult, uh, best friends, the process, uh, the neo process, the satanic temple with Mr. Lucy and Greaves, Doug, <laughs> hi Doug. Hey, Doug. Um, you know, whatever group it is, it's all factional nonsense because mm -hmm. they're all working together behind the scenes, no matter what. Yes. Like that stuff with David Leavitt and Nicholas Oliverdian slash Rossi slash blah, 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 blah. 
like I took a completely different approach to that. And that was the reason why that case came out against David Leavitt was because that kid, Nicholas Alaberti and slash Rossi, he filed a legitimate lawsuit in Rhode Island against five states, DCYF. Mm -hmm. I have the court records where they were I trafficking think. kids through a night to night program. Mm -hmm. And I identified two men who were involved in the Franklin scandal. In that case, I got in touch with Nicholas's attorney. They went silent on me. I'm like, Oh, okay. So you guys aren't actually going to do anything. And this is literally the Franklin scandal continued because chief Wadman from the Franklin scandal, for those who are familiar, I'm not going to go into it, but he's the police chief that maybe, maybe not knocked up the one victim that was thrown in to uh, solitary mm -hmm. confinement because she didn't change her story. Right. Guess where he ends up? He ends up going to uh, Moldova with the Leave It Institution. Hmm. Wow. Who's tied in with Victor Yoshenko from Ukraine? Yeah. And and that's Correct. who's just secured. I mean, there's there's that whole story of David Levitt fly or going over to the the Indian reservation and securing uh, a little girl who. Uh, anyway. Oh, with Kills Back. Yes, that whole thing. Back. Yeah. Uh, Alessandra Fishing Hawk. And then he just walks off of the, this is his words. He actually said that he just walked off mm -hmm. there and five minutes later his phone rang. Well, that, you know, Kills Back's in prison now for something unrelated. But, <laughs> anyways. And I mean, here's David Levitt, David Levitt, you know, as a Utah County prosecuting attorney who's also accused by the Hamblin daughters of him and his wife, Shalom of some really horrendous and egregious stuff to children. I mean, it just, it just keeps going and going and going. The but Nicholas Oliverdian accused him of that too. Nicholas Oliverdian mm. put it on a blog. And now all of a sudden oh, yeah. at that time, David Levitt was like, uh, even though we closed our, uh, sexual crimes unit we have yeah. a backlog and all of a sudden these are all testing positive for nicholas oliverdi and right i'm like so we what, need to what extradite him what is I'm like this? you are so yeah. full of crap bro this is completely ridiculous like the fact that he came out and challenged the sheriff like that on live tv mm -hmm. i'm like that kid wasn't lying and that's why i dug into nicholas's story because it was legit it was mm -hmm. completely legit. Everything that he brought forward, yeah. you can see like old news clips where they're interviewing him and he's bringing that suit forward. And he's like, they were literally se sexually assaulting us every single night and moving us night to night and like not notifying anybody. It was a setup program. It was in Nebraska, Rhode Island, Utah, uh, I think Nevada and one other place. And like, I did a whole deep dive like the Rhode Island State Police are really involved in this. They're oh, extremely man. corrupt. It ties into the Mandalay Bay massacre. Like when I tell you that I've gone like really hard on that angle, mm -hmm. it's really crazy. Like the level that they're trying to cover this up. But, but it like, also I mean, shows us, you know, it also shows us because I mean, for those of us not familiar with it, it shows just from. You know, like whenever you're digging into the process church and the final judgment and their connection to Scientology, you know, it's Scientology, basically. Right. And then you have y'all, y'all know, y'all know here from the beginning, I've said, oh, my God, I'm going to be like Rhea. I'm going to be Rhea Lemony of the Mormon church. Ha ha ha. Right. Ha ha. Jokes on me always. <laughs> and so no, turns no, out that no. Dana has found out that Leah Remini is pushing and and endorsing or plugging uh the best friend animal society which david levitt is part of right david levitt i have not made a direct connection with david levitt his brother mike mm. when he was when he was governor yes absolutely well, i have go. him with best friends in the i think as far back as 1997 is as far back as i've gotten now i also have them he's with so Gregory Castle, which is Father Mendez, advocate for Satan, uh, <laughs> from the process. I have him with which is from Louisiana, Michael. right? Huh? And aren't they the castles or whatever from Louisiana? 
Oh, honey, no, 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 that story that's is where I'm from. everything. Everything that's out there is a lie about them. I've been working wow. through debunking all of that. Everything is a lie. But I do have him with the Secretary of Defense Cohen and Mike, Michael Olivet, Mike Leavitt, whatever, David Leavitt's brother, I think as far back as like 1997. So, I mean, they're getting in bed pretty early. And this is right around the time when they're starting their no kill initiative, mm -hmm. which is very dark because this is where we're seeing some very weird research. Some people might call it cloning. The Vatican Bank is involved. Wow. You got to wonder what's going on on the property because the author of the book for people who are not familiar Familiar, there's a book called The Family written by Ed Sanders, and it's about the time of what happened with Charles Manson. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is really where uh, Best Friends history as the process church of the final judgment is brought into public. Now, they were sued almost successfully in the <laughs> United States. The chapter was removed here. They settled out of court. In the UK, though, on their home turf, where they're from, and I have proven that they are tied to British nobility and British intelligence at a bare minimum, they lost on their home turf. Ooh. Turns out they were doing more than what he even put in the book. Wow. Uh, and so when you read through those court records, you see that they were involved in bestiality, they were involved in sacrifices, they were involved in money laundering, all kinds of stuff. Um, uh, I, I, I want to speak on that right there because, yeah, I mean, through like Janet Russin is basically there's Tim Ballard, you know, and, and he's being told by Janet Russin, his psychic slash intel, who would tell him where to find the children on the ops that he profited off of. He's a prophet. All right. But it's with an F. <laughs> and so here's Janet Russin and here's Tom Harrison. And you know, they're, they're, I don't know. It's disgusting, but he's going to be the prophet of the Mormon church eventually. And then he's going to run for us Senate, which he was going to until he, you know, all the news caught up with him, all the, you know, the abuse, not all of it, but um, that and I mean, it just, I don't know. I keep losing my thought. <laughs> Why? It's okay. Ah, um, just, yeah, I don't know. Go. <laughs> but, oh, well, so what they're wanting to do, what, they, what I've heard through the grapevine, just kind of researching, I don't really know where I found this, but, you know, it, something about using the dogs as um cadavers putting putting spirits and in, putting demons into the dogs or something and i'm just like what are y'all even talking about you know i don't even know <laughs> it's kind of like the remote viewing and all that weird shit and i'm just like what i'm pumping the brakes so so hard over here because you know that goes into what chad daybell was doing allegedly you know him and julie Rowe were allegedly meeting with Tom Harrison um, in his office in Salt Lake City. They were, you know, Chad lives in Idaho. Uh, but meeting with Tom Harrison and learning how to portal. I used to call Tom Harrison, didn't even know it was Tom Harrison. I used to call him portal guy. Okay. Well, that's portal guy. So what the hell's going on? And because this goes hand in hand with this case, Chad Daybell, uh, you know, uh, the friends closest to Lori uh, and Chad during that time, David Warwick and Melanie Gibb, they were present the night that JJ, my nephew, was murdered, in, in, allegedly in a townhome. Anyways, uh, and David doesn't remember anything. He had a bad, 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 bad dream that he can recall every damn detail about. But, you know, just their whole thing is that, um, you know, they woke up the next morning and you know, they asked Lori what, where JJ was. And she's just like, well, my brother, you know, her brother, Alex took care of him because he was being a zombie and he knocked a picture of Jesus off of her refrigerator. And I'm just like, yeah, no, I don't believe you. And nobody here believes them. They did for a while because they're kind of doing this misinformation, disinformation, this dumb it down, act like, you know, they don't know anything. Melanie, I can't recall. Gib is what her name should be because she can never recall all the details around something so tragic that anybody normal 
would be able to recall. And, and so it, it is just so, it, so that it's like they poo poo all over everything. And it's, it's, it's my family. And it just, it pisses me off because <laughs> I don't know. I, and so whenever I learned that this goes bigger, you know, than Chad and Lori, it always has, but the focus has been just on them and nobody ever goes above that. And I was like, uh, uh-uh, this goes, uh, I felt it in my gut, you know, that this goes higher. I just couldn't prove it. And I don't have hard, you know, like facts or evidence, but I mean, the devil's in the details, literally, right? We're out here fighting demons straight up. <laughs> it is literally tagline. like the little things that will like break something wide open. So mm-hmm. like your comment about like Leah Romini, like in my personal experience, I'm of the full opinion. Leah Romini is a straight up processian. Uh, she has blocked me. She will not interact with me since I pointed out that she supports best friends and from my experience, uh, Best Friends is literally a Scientology cult. So the root of this is really Scientology, but the process or Best Friends, whatever you would like to call it, uh, I view them and I think that I've laid out a strong argument thus Mm -hmm. far that they are the some would call it muscle, others would call it the chaos oh. agents, basically, of the church, right? So they look separate, they look different, but they still operate the exact same way. And they, they are still goal. very alive today in very different forms. But when you're talking about, you know, things like remote viewing, uh, stuff like that, that's not a conspiracy. We can trace that back. We know that that's research that has been done, Mm -hmm. that has been documented. That Scientology was involved. The CIA was involved. Um, As far (laughs) as weird sort of, I call it woo-woo, like Mm -hmm. demon. So, I mean, I say we're out here fighting demons. What Lori was saying was Tylee and JJ and my uncle and Tammy. They were saying that they they were possessed by a demon. They gave them demon names. Um, and then they had to, uh, there's a text between Chad and Lori and Chad pipes back something to the tune of, well, it's just not that easy to get a spirit out of a, out of a body. And I'm just like, what is really going on here? But then it feeds into David Hamblin's whole parts theory. He has a parts theory and Robert Hamblin is his dad, Robert and June Hamblin, uh, wrote, you know, papers and stuff, uh, did research and everything for the Tavistock, uh, Tavistock Institute. Institute. And I really don't know anything besides just a blurb, you know, I mean, I'm just getting into all that. I don't know how to explain that to people, but it's behavioral modification. I see that playing out plain as day with, with what's going on here. Just the whole, you, there's a clip of David Levitt actually saying, to a document uh, documentarian you know when they asked him if uh he believed in satanic ritual abuse he said oh yeah i believe it exists and he was like and they can't help but gloat as they're talking about these things because that they're a part of in my opinion and and so you really just have to listen to the words that they're saying i don't care how boring they are i learned more about mormonism than i ever 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 wanted to <laughs> um but you have to listen to what they're saying and and anyways, but David Levitt says, you know, it's about repetition and reward. How do you get a dog, you know, you, you, a dog to listen or whatever you, um, repetition and reward. He's like, same thing with a little girl, uh, you know, doing bad things. But anyways, it's so in your face, you know? And so that's what it seems like. It seems like there's just been this subtle twisting of of things of let's just say good and bad good and evil jesus and and the, and satan you know and it's just like these women mainly these people ruby frankie these mothers mormon mothers um and and lori Vallow, who they're just standing up for christ everything that they're doing they think they're doing in righteousness but yet you look at their fruits and and oh my god you know and it's like they don't know up from down, uh, Jesus from Satan. They don't know. They think that what they're doing is right. It's so weird and horrible. And it's a problem. 
it's it's a it's a problem and it has been i think I, you're being too nice and i think that you're giving them a pass i say fuck all that and we drag them all out and it's time right. to uh drop the hammer on everybody because so let's go back to like tavistock right okay. so you talked about behavioral modification i have mm -hmm. some like stuff on og tavistock when they were first trying to roll that out mm -hmm. uh and virginia mcclary she is a whistleblower from the church of scientology a real whistleblower not like leo <laughs> romini or any of the trash you see on tv uh mm -hmm. whistleblowers don't get tv shows don't forget that folks uh mm -hmm. however <laughs> showing that oh out of you know, steam. Yeah. they wanted to use war to traumatize the public heal the public like put them to heal and then immediately and i read the paperwork on my channel because i said you guys aren't going to believe me unless i show you this and you see it for yourself where they're literally saying that they need to infiltrate every angle of society government medicine academia everything especially children's welfare and they are going to create the society that they want. Now, right. LDS Abuse, who I have communicated with, that's like my OG homie on Twitter. Yeah, oh, yeah we go Justin, way back. He's right? one of my first. He's <laughs> my, like, my favorite. So he brought up something that I had found in a newspaper article as well. And I think it's a very astute point that people need to remember. Because as far as the woo-woo stuff, mm -hmm. this is where I check out as far as yeah. like, I don't talk about it there because there was a newspaper article in Utah. It was shortly after uh, Bishop Glenn Pace made his statement about what he had been told about the cult from the Wasatch Front and all of the victims that, Which you know, he cult? had talked thing. to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he talked about, but the newspaper talked about how <laughs> literally the satanic part is to traumatize. That's yeah. it. It's to traumatize and to make the children not believable because That's it's not believable. The David rest Hamlin. of it, yes, the rest of it theory. is methodical. Mm -hmm. It's purposeful. They do it for a reason. And I'm not saying that some of these people don't believe in it. Don't get it twisted. There are people mm -hmm. that believe in it, like Bowen, the Punisher. Uh, I think that that dude straight up believes like what he is doing is giving him some sort of power. And I don't deny that maybe it's not, uh, but I am most certain that he is going to rot in hell. And I hope that he does sooner than later. However, mm -hmm. it's. <laughs> Taking away from that, because that is a distraction. It really right. is. At the end of the day, it's a complete distraction. And as far as specifically, like, within the LDS, you know, I discussed it recently. But, like, Michael Aquino, I know it's very conspiratorial for people. I don't there do the conspiracy know. stuff. But Michael Aquino's first wife went back into the church as a Mormon and a satanic priest. This time's up with Bishop Pace's memo, literally, at the exact same time in Utah. Is she the reason for this cult, I don't know because guess who else showed up in Utah at that time? Best Friends mm -hmm. Animal Society, aka the Process Church of the Final Judgment. So who knows? But this actually goes back to Brigham Young, uh, the second prophet for the Mormon Church. I mean, it it really does go back um, where they're doing this. Um, Goel had just posted something in his Substack about detailing. It was a journal entry from one of one of Brigham Young's wives and where they're doing this to their children and detailing it kind of in the way that Ruby Frankie was doing it. And I really think that the way that like Ruby Frankie pinning her own stuff and, and like these women doing it back in Brigham Young, you know, back in that time in the 1800s, you know, um, I think that is this blackmail thing that they do. I really do that way. If something like this were to happen, this is what gets thrown out there, you know, and it, but yet it's just, and it, it makes me think of when Tim Ballard told uh, one of the, uh, one of his alleged victims, Celeste, Boris, Boris, um, we're going to have so much shit on everybody and it's going to be fun, you know, or something like that. And I'm just like, that's, this is what they do. They are all about blackmail and just exploiting. That's what they do. They, they are grifters. Whoa. <laughs> For, they they invented it you know blackmail is young. power though you know blackmail is power i mean but this 
you know, that is a concept that goes way, way back. And I mean, mm -hmm. obviously, you know, you want to trace back just the Mormon history that far. You know, I'm not going back that I'm far. Not, yeah. I'm making the <laughs> argument, though, from mm -hmm. the 50s, you know, that's a bit more reasonable yeah. to yeah. where we can work forward to now, mm -hmm. because I am of the full opinion that this network in particular does expand and trace back to New York, to Florida, to Georgia. Uh, I think I think that all of these things are connected. It's not me trying to sound like a complete schizophrenic paranoid, like, you well, know, wild right person, <laughs> but there's just too many similarities. Mm -hmm. There's too many similarities. I'm and right now, I'm people... working on tying uh, Jody Hildebrandt or the Hildebrandt family. I'm working on tying and seeing if they were in Tucson, Arizona at the same time that the Hamblins were. I mean, just to see, like, kind of like what you're doing and like what Goel does as far as tying uh, the geographical locations and just seeing what they're doing at the same time. You know, what's going on over there? <laughs> sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. And see what other crimes are going on. That's yeah. what I would recommend is see what other types of crimes are going on in the area. I mean, that's what I'm working on right now, really, with the process and the Atlanta child murders, because I, I'm mm. of the full belief that the Atlanta child murders were not solved. I think the process is implicated. And I also think that they were implicated in the son of Sam and Manson. Um, it's but kind of like John Benet Ramsey, too. That has all been just crapped on. I mean, there's I there's no sense of justice for these victims straight up. It's crazy. It's mm. propaganda. It's propaganda. Yeah. It's easier for you to look at the TV and listen to these two people were just really crazy. In love. And they, they were did this. <laughs> and it's an isolated incident. Mm -hmm. And the network continues. What did we see with... Jeffrey Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell. It's the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. Does anybody think that that stopped? Didn't stop. I can assure you it hasn't stopped, you know, and there was a network before them and there was another network that was competing with them. And it's just all these competing mm -hmm. factions all the time. It's so the learned behavior. Are intelligence it's networks. They're all trying to get blackmail on each other because not only blackmail, but they're also gathering intelligence on one another. Mm -hmm. But that's what I'm also trying to show people in the history of some of these cults, whether you're talking about the children of God, the LDS, uh, the process, Scientology, what about Jehovah Witnesses? whatever it is. Do you run across mm -hmm. any Jehovah Witnesses or anything? Not that's, that's what I'm waiting for. <laughs> that's what I'm waiting for from Canada. I'm waiting on a stack that I'm going to pay a chunk of money for <laughs> that um, is an archive that I have a feeling yeah. they're going to charge me uh, a hefty penny for it. <laughs> but I'm trying to show people that there is a certain point in time where every single one of these groups, like the teachings for the higher echelon of the churches, it's all the exact same. It's okay. all, it's all identical. Kind the of words are changed in a their little own bit. way. In their own way, but it's the exact same and they're all moving in lockstep because they're all mm -hmm. moving in lockstep with the government. Now, why would wow. they be doing that? Because I of places know. like Tavistock, because of places like Esalon, the because Esalen, of yeah. things like MK MKUltra. Um, you know, and I try to make the argument to people and it's a loaded topic, but... You know, MK Ultra is not funny. It's not about acid, and it never stopped. What we are seeing today, the fruition of these cults, is MK Ultra got tax exempt status and was given a religious status, and they are allowed to do what they want to the American public, and they cannot be investigated. That's what Jonestown did for MK Ultra. That's all yeah, that happened. That makes complete. What about FLDS? You know, Warren Jeffs. That too, Same. because they're it's trading in human trafficking children. Nonsense. Yeah, they're trafficking children through that network or whatever. That's the same thing. They all share money and, and they all, you know, clap hand, slap hands at the at the water cooler. Um, but human trafficking, because these boys or I'm sorry, these kids are not born or they're born into it and they don't really have record of them being born into it. And, and so they just traffic them. And then there's, um, I've actually had, uh, seen comments whenever Tylee and JJ were missing. I didn't know what it meant then, but I just ran across them again. And I was like, Oh, somebody said that, you know, Tylee probably ended up, you know, basically, you know, being abused and then whatever. And then they were like the little boy, he probably is one of the lost boys and the lost boys are, 
what you know once these uh flds uh, the boys get to a certain age it becomes like a competition you know so they just they get rid of them yeah and so uh, it's so crazy all all the things it's it's so much <laughs> y'all my head's been exploding imploding uh, and i'm just like what is all this you know i mean i know i'm real down and deeper into the research than definitely way deeper than mainstream will go <laughs> they won't even i'm a family member and they they've interviewed everybody <laughs> and then they're just like yeah okay mm. because they don't want to go public with that because it implicates everybody it implicates yeah. everything because there's going to be traces of money going everywhere because like oh. LDS abuse and I, like at one point, we were looking over some documents. And for people that are familiar with Iran Contra, if they, I mean, I don't trust Whitney Webb. That's my personal opinion, right. for my reasons. But oh my god, where she talks about those networks, you know, Adnan Khashoggi was funding the LDS Church in Utah. That's a straight money line through Iran Contra. Like I'm trying to show people that if we can go back and make the argument that iran contra started with the manson murders and started with the process church of the final judgment and the church of yeah. scientology that that was the beginning of it and that yeah. iran contra also involved human trafficking mm -hmm. and Still. the murdering yeah. of humans for money aka snuff films okay and so with that i have to say that's where elm russell ballard really ties in with this because hillman like gordon bowen have this alleged uh 20 million dollar the church 20 million dollars the church paid to gordon bowen to make some movie right and it never it never came into fruition never you know turned into anything but yet the general authorities in the mormon church the upper echelons they're meeting with gordon bowen an excommunicated member uh of the church that used to be a member of the church why are they rubbing elbows with him why is gordon bowen uh dubbed as m russell ballard's prodigal son one of them and then, like, even chiding them, whenever Chad, whenever all this stuff first came out, there was rumblings or whatever. We just didn't know much at that point. You know, the the whole world was just finding out about Tylee and JJ being missing. And it was, this was, uh, you know, uh, December, the latter part of December, whenever it became public. And, um and so we just weren't there, you know, we were just trying to find where Lori and Chad were. But um, anyway, so uh, there's just, I don't know where I was going again. Damn, what is, where was I going with that? Um, oh, yeah. So Chad Daybell was talking to this guy about producing, okay, a movie about Chad Daybell's books and nobody on this planet thinks Chad Daybell is a good author, you know, um, it's weird. And so I found an interview of this guy talking about meeting with Chad Daybell and I'm just like, what really? I mean, I just don't even think I would, who would approach Chad Daybell about writing or I'm sorry about, you know, making a movie based on his books. It just doesn't pan out. Then we have Jason Mao, who's right there with Tim Ballard. Um, I have them photoed together even you know there's Jason Mao worked on this movie called um crap I can't think of it but it had zombies movie the whole concept of zombies which is what you know my family was labeled as Tylee and JJ Charles Tammy they were zombies okay that's what they called a demon and and so but he's in a movie about or you know he's working on the set of a movie about zombies not long before all this they're just Satanists, man. I'm telling you, that's all they do. I, I don't know. I think they just use these conferences and stuff like that to meet with other like-minded people and not just to discuss the Book of Mormon or the Heartland Theory where Ottoman Diamond and all that shit. That's whatever. I think that's a ruse. I think that's just, you know, like you think the um, with the woo-woo and stuff. I think it's just a distraction, too. Or a cover. It's both. It's kind of both. Um, anyways, it, it's just, it goes so deep. <laughs> it goes so deep. But the snuff films, I, I don't want to see them. 
I don't ever, I don't think no. anybody here wants to ever see them. Do they exist? I, I think they do. I think that's, uh, I never been on the dark web, but I know, uh, you know, Tim Ballard claims to have worked for, uh, Homeland security and, um, you know, had to look at this stuff for however many hours per day, whatever, you know what I mean? Like it just, but yet here's Paul Adams down there in Arizona selling basically his, his abuse, take, you know, of his daughters and everything. And he's selling it or trading it or whatever the hell they do. I don't know what they do, but yeah, I, I don't know why we don't ever find proof. It really does suck. <laughs> And well, if we, we don't did, find we're proof not because the FBI of it. denies that it exists. That's right. that's why we don't find proof because the FBI's official position is that it's not real, even though it's been proven that it is real. They've wow. had that stance since the first satanic panic. So uh, because I am of the opinion that the satanic panic that people know of was a uh, sort of wag the dog moment from the mm. media to distract the general public from Iran-Contra, but not only Iran-Contra, the fact that there were actual children that were going missing during Iran-Contra because they were being trafficked for these networks. Um, and a lot of it was happening through cults because, I mean, a lot of cults, like the Children of God, they were an international human trafficking cult. People don't find it weird that they had millions of dollars back in the 70s and were all over the world and kids were going missing, right? Uh, and they were clearly known pedophiles and abusers and and literally, there's stupid true crime documentaries where they're showing some of that crap and they're blurring it out. And I'm like, that's completely inappropriate and ridiculous. And that's why, like, I hate that's true crime. I don't watch it. I think it's completely ridiculous. But this is why people need to read for themselves because I read that entire report. Uh, it's His name is Kenneth Lanning, where mm -hmm. I show people, I'm like, think for yourself. Does this make sense? Or right. is he just telling you that he's cherry picking these things? Because guess what? This is what local law enforcement is being directed with. Because I don't think I don't take the position that all cops are bad. I, I'm not that type of person. I know that there are good people out there that are up against a system that they are never, ever going to be able to take down. And I just pray for their safety and that they can do the best that they and, can. Or that and, they don't get uh, pinned with something, you know? Yeah, the whole yeah, set, exactly. Set up, you know, like, I, I wonder how many actual innocent people are put to death, jailed, you know, in prison for the rest of their lives because of these psychopaths, okay, <laughs> with absolute power. That should freak everybody out, you know? That's why I remind people whistleblowers don't get TV shows. People need to remember Gary Webb, uh, the Iran-Contra, uh, Gary Caridori, the Franklin Scandal, uh, Danny Castellaro, the Octopus. That stupid Netflix documentary was a total limited hangout. It was not true what happened to him. Uh, but they're all dead. They're all dead. Whistleblowers don't get shows on TV. Right. Uh, I have challenged uh, Leah Romini to a debate multiple times and her <laughs> friends as well, including Mike Rinder. Uh, these people are not who they present themselves to be. And I am of the personal opinion that they are a part of this exact problem in their own yeah. way. Uh, specifically because of that Child USA group. There's just a lot of weird stuff there. There's a lot of weird money moving around, including mm -hmm. Ghislaine Maxwell money through her uh, nonprofit right. Terramar, where she was trying to set up an Atlantis on the bottom of the ocean because whatever, I don't know. Uh, but, you know, they have money coming in through there and the Rockefellers and the Rothschilds. So uh, I would tell people there are no heroes. There are no experts. You need to right. read, see it for yourself, draw your own conclusions, uh, watch where you're giving your money to specifically, uh, seriously. Because when you them. start tracking some of this old money, because, you know, I was originally looking through the stuff with Leave It and the stuff with Though You Are, and like the Leave It Foundation was literally being funded by USAID, which is a known CIA cutout. Why is the CIA sending David Leave It to Ukraine? He's and nasty, why is Tim right? Ballard oh. there at the exact same time? What are they wow. doing? Why is Zelensky then coming out? And I, I don't believe in politics. I don't think that they're real. I don't but why either. is 
Zelensky coming out saying that Putin's kidnapping children. And we've got the Leavitts there. We know what they were doing with the Indian Reservation. And, Ballard. In Indiana, and we know what Tim Ballard was doing. Seems like there's a bit of a problem. You know what I mean? People got to take the emotion out of it. Like, yeah. And that's people hard are trained me. in propaganda. They are trained right. in propaganda. And that's why people get so mad at me because I'm like, your heroes suck and they're not real, <laughs> but they're trained sure. to get into your brain and your heart because and that's it's their job. Yes. That is what they're doing. And I mean, I feel duped too. Trust me. You know, I'm just like, oh my God, you know, but really. I mean, that's kind of what society is today anyways. It's just, a, it just seems like the next person that people are going to prop up and idolize to no end. And then, you know, then they end up in the headlines and you find out all kinds of things about them and people are still there to support them. And you're just like, what? Well, whatever, you know, I just, it would be nice to have the, the um, courtesy to, Kind of like how John Delenn pushes um, and, and Radio Free Mormon and Bill Real and everybody in that genre. You know how they they uh, talk about informed consent with the Mormon church. People, when they sign into it or sign up for it and everything and go through the church, they don't know about all the nasty stuff that the church does. And so they go in blindly or they're born into it. And then they find out. And then they, and I mean, this is just me. I believe in God. I don't, you, anybody, I'm not forcing you to, to believe the way I do, but, and so what it does is it turns people when they leave the church and find out about all the lies and everything, they tie, have tied Joseph Smith with Jesus. Okay. Even so much so that when people leave, they leave everything behind. They, they leave religion. They leave the, uh, their belief in God even. And it's just like, golly, you know, just if these influences weren't around, how great would society really be? How many murders would really take place? You know, it's why it's like, for what? So what is the C or well, what is that letter agency up to or the letter agencies? What are they up to? Are they part of this uh, grand scheme? You know, an accelerationalist yeah. also to usher in the yeah. second coming of, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I don't think he, that they would call it the second coming. I think that they call it their blackmail laundering operation. You know, it's whatever they're going to profit from. But yeah. initially, when I was coming into this whole uh, noited conspiracy theory about <laughs> right? being intelligence operations, mm. I said, wouldn't it be amazing if we could prove that all of the cults, religions, whatever, that they were mm -hmm. intelligence operations created by the intelligence state, the national security or the people, state. by the people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that your worldview and your view of eternity or whatever you conceive it as, you find out that that's an operation. I would hope that people would go out into the street and tear it all down and we would burn <laughs> over and take everything back for ourselves. I would hope that that would be be enough to anger people because yeah. there's such a violation of being everything human. it's a violation everything. of everything and it's a violation of your spirit but i mean that is what they are trying to take away from you in my personal mm -hmm. opinion is the spiritual part of you i think that that is a huge part of this but yeah. it's figuring out who's involved where the money's going who the players the <laughs> are where it came from you know what i mean but that's like my mm -hmm. end game argument is getting everybody really angry and then hopefully hopefully I it it here. I doubt it, it's a pipe dream a girl can dream you know yeah they're in my my audience is used to this <laughs> you know because i'm just i don't know i circle the drain i'm i'm always just like i won't leave anything or leave something until i have said it i don't know how however many different ways you know uh just to convey the message and then i do it repeat every week you know when i come when i come on here live and and just to kind of share with everybody you know what i found and and then things happen so then we're all like what you know <laughs> and it's just nuts and i've learned so much so freaking much about the world i live in my worldview is shattered uh no i don't want to go to disney world <laughs> no i don't want to go to any of these freaking places 
nor do I want to let my children go. And it sucks because I got to be like the, you know, when my little boy was like, hey, I want to join uh, Boy Scouts. I was like, oh, no, nope. <laughs> and so it's like I got to be, you know, the bitch. And I'm just like, I'll be the bitch. I'll, I'll wear it <laughs> proudly, you know, but no, I'm not going to put my children in harm's way. Mm -mm. Here you go. <laughs> it's like, uh, it, yeah, a Boy Scouts of America thing that, I mean, that was so huge, you know, all, all these institutions, all these organizations, you know, who claim to be doing good things and I mean they're just really good at gaslighting everybody you know or just fooling everybody myself included you know and it's then their job yeah it's their job I mean you're born into this way of thinking anyways and so you, it's like you spend the rest of your life once you kind of become aware of things then you spend the rest of your life seeking the truth because you're like hmm well, if they lied about something so little, I mean, I've said that about people that, you know, uh, are, uh, you know, in all these cases and everything that happened in the true crime genre. And I mean, I only follow them or I'm only here because of my family. My family was murdered and that is why I'm here. You know, before that, I really didn't, I, I didn't, you know, get too deep into anything. So it's just, it's mm, shattered. <laughs> so, but I would rather know the truth, you know, than to be a, a sheep, you know, just what, where do I go? Um, but then it's frustrating being on this side of it, right? Don't you have to, don't you, don't you think it's frustrating being on this side of it? You know, don't get me started. Come on now. Trust Go. me. I know I am middle aged <laughs> with face tattoos out here saying some really unpopular things that will probably know, be alone demon. for a long time, girl. <laughs> Trust me. I, uh, it's cause once you know it, like you said, you can't unknow it, right? Like there's right. no, no. Back mm -hmm. back you can't, that, that, <laughs> like, that bell is not it. torn. I've already <laughs> walked off the cliff. I'm gone. And it, it becomes a growing desire to, want to learn and expand your knowledge base mm -hmm. and but i always tell people don't ever listen to anybody who says that they're an expert who won't show you where they're getting stuff it is our right to know the mm -hmm. truth it is our human right to know the actual history uh and it's not easy and it's certainly not easy to get through but no. I, I personally do think that the exploration and study of these topics i think that it's valuable i oh, think yeah. whether it makes you know a little difference it you know on a youtube or eventually getting the attention of people that you know are a bit more powerful or who can actually do something uh that kind of feels that part feels a little bit like a pipe dream uh but even just having one person maybe reconsider, right. you know, and help them, I think that that makes all the difference in the world. Because I know walking, that it did for me. Yeah, you know, we're walking I mean? billboards, we're walking knowledge bases, you know, and so it's like the word spreads, and then you're like, well, wait, uh, you know, I mean, that's what we're doing. That's that's the whole YouTube experience, anyways, as far as live streaming and stuff like that, and and having these, you know, conversations. That's where I learn the most is just from watching other people having conversations i'm just like oh my god yeah <laughs> what <laughs> and it's nuts um and i mean like you always say you never know when that switch is going to be flipped and so then what you know when we don't have our that connectivity that we've all or you get banned or sh yeah, I'm shadow banned all the time, girl. I stay there. Yeah, no, I'm <laughs> permanent. I'm, I'm banned, banned right now from streaming, so I can't stream. Oh, you know, keep being naughty. <laughs> just, so you're being naughty right now by having me on here. Just so oh well. You know. Hey, it's called sidestepping. It's called networking. Is what you're doing. So hey, hey. there's nothing wrong doing this. It's 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 what platforms should do instead of silencing people and. um just buffalo in them you know i mean it it's crazy you know tim ballard he's he's surrounded by all these uh aubrey marcus or marcus aubrey I always say names 
backwards. <laughs> and um, Glenn Beck and, you know, his one of his best friends, Tim's best friends, I'd say, and alleged partner in crime, in my opinion, Sean Reyes. And he was, he yeah, is yeah. the, um, uh, oh my God, the Utah prosecutor, what is he? Uh, General, oh my God. Y'all, I'm so sorry. I'm just like, duh. Uh, what, the Leavitts? What is uh, Sean Reyes? Oh my God. See the attorney general. Attorney general. Damn. Yeah. Oh, but he's yeah. totally his partner so, in crime, yeah, dude. Totally. From learning about or through Lynn Packer's reporting on Tim Ballard and Sean Reyes, the Operation Underground Railroad thing, you know, we learned that um, Sean Reyes's dad, Buddy, Buddy Reyes, you know, he was producing it and he was in some really weird you know, horrible movies. Yeah. And it's just, he came from the Philippines and I, I want to know what his role is, but then you have where Tim Ballard is connected, you know, with, um, I can never think of his name, uh, Verestigi. And I mean, they're tied to Mexican president government. They're tied to the Haitian government. They're tied to Colombian government. They're tied to Ukrainian government and England and, and God knows what else. So, I mean, I think that's enough for me that, that, and I'm just like, mm -mm, mm -mm. tell that to somebody who's stupid because I'm not picking up what they're putting down. You know, I just, I don't know. And then, oh, that whole sound of freedom movie came out. And I mean, I never watched it. I won't watch it because me nope. I mean, that's supporting propaganda that is supporting Tim Ballard's vision and the LDS church's vision because they backed him financially. Some of them allegedly um, angel studios. That is, uh, I, I just, it goes on and on and on all these people. And you're just like, how can there be so many bad quote unquote, bad people in one? It's like a barrel of a fish, you know? And and then none of them are held accountable. And I think there's a reason for that, you know? It's because they have blackmail on each other. And uh, flies are generally attracted to shit. So <laughs> that's how they find each other. Because, you know, I mean, it wasn't what? I think a, a Sound of Freedom was out for, I think, a week or two. And the producer got arrested for yeah. uh, sexual abuse charges. And I was like, well, hot damn. That didn't well, take like, long, yeah. did we go yeah. let's get this show on the road this is what i've been trying to say the entire time like yeah this and whole, that's what they yeah. used was the emotions that's that's what they do the emotions and and that's how they drive us y'all that's what they do that's why they play all the things they play on news media mainstream you know they do it because we are to a, a large extent we are traumatized by the things that or I'm sorry, desensitized by the things that they are showing us to where it just is like, oh, okay, well, what's the next thing? You know, you know how we consume these things. And then uh, within a week, it's like shredded and everybody's already, you know, that's old news. And I'm just like, what? <laughs> I'm way back here still. Like uh, my head's ringing, you know, and there's so many important things to talk about and so many conversations to have about all these connections. It's nuts and so john huntsman that just reminded me i uh, saw a comment and so john huntsman um who the lds hierarchy used to use the huntsman jets you know to go to and fro you know and so john huntsman his name was found in jeffrey epstein's black book little black book and then he's connected to senator mike lee who used to go to the same conferences as Chad, Daybill, Mike, James, Nancy, James, all, all the Preparing a People Network, and then literally comes out uh, with the civil lawsuits and everything for Tim Ballard just recently that Tim Ballard's meeting up in the airport in Salt Lake City with Senator Mike Lee 
discussing plans for Tim to become U.S. Con- uh, you know, uh, U.S. Senate, run for U.S. Senate. And I'm just like, hmm. And then you have, you know, there's, okay, so there's a, this is kind of uh, rumored, I guess you could say, but whenever the church issued a public hit piece or whatever you want to call it, where they publicly distance themselves from Tim Ballard to Vice News, um, that there's, there's word on the streets that it was actually Gordon Bowen that emailed that in about Tim using official church, you know, using the official church email. And so I'm just trying to figure out the whole dynamic with Mitt Romney um, because he's like this with Gordon Bowen, but then there's Tim Ballard and, and Tom Harrison. Tom Harrison used to be the point person for the church leadership with the whole satanic ritual abuse. Okay. And then yet Tom, uh, Tim Ballard is using Tom Harrison's, he's throwing his name into the mix. And I'm like, what about, um, he had to, Tim said, I had to do some research and find out about how, uh, service helps the brain, you know? And I'm just like, bullshit, <laughs> whatever. Saving kids helps, you know, oxytocin. And I'm just like, what dude, shut up. But he says, you know, he said, so I did my research. He's like, and so um, Tom Harrison, he names Tom Harrison. I was like, go ahead. <laughs> and he's like, he's a brain specialist. And so, no, he's a freaking therapist of children, by the way. And then he's also named as uh, working in aftercare for Tim Ballard. We, where's the children? Where are the children? Where are the children? Where are the victims? Please. We know there are victims. Maybe not so much of, you know, uh, and an outsourced uh, sex trafficking, but I'd say maybe when Tim's around, there there might be some, <laughs> a lot, perhaps. And it, it's just like you can't. Uh, and, and and so why is Ch- Chad Daybell meeting with Tom Harrison? It, I mean, it just go boop boop. You know, it goes down the ladder, down the line, and it's just yeah. Like, there's yeah. a lot of interesting parallels, aren't there? Like, yeah. why is the head of the Satanic Temple, Lucy and Greaves, a.k.a. Doug Messner, <laughs> uh, a Harvard graduate who specializes in false memory syndrome? That mm-hmm. seems kind of weird, where he's running yeah. around trying to Go get the licenses taken away from the therapists who specialize in dissociative identity disorder, multiple personality disorder, whatever you want to call it. Uh, Little Dougie boy doesn't want to talk about that. And I have a big problem with that because uh, people want to say, trust the science, the science is out there on these studies as far as the way that the brain reacts to trauma. Uh, And I also like to remind people that there is literally a reason why Elon keeps like killing all the monkeys uh, is because you cannot recreate the human brain. You cannot recreate it. And they want to be God. They want to. They want to be God and Mm -hmm. they cannot recreate it. The science is out there that our brains have a protective mechanism, especially when we are children and Mm-hmm. Hey, you want to add in Satanism to really discredit and traumatize a and child further when they're told that they're mm-hmm. a liar? I can That's imagine going what to Tyler and JJ that went whole process. Oof. It's Oof. ridiculous. But the fact that the leader of the Satanic Temple that he specializes in that is completely ridiculous to me. Mm. I think that something to consider, and it's something that I'm working on on the back end, and I'm not going to be done with it anytime soon. But, you know, I'm looking at, like, Mitt Romney's dad, because Mitt Romney's dad, there's some implications with him in Iran-Contra, and everybody needs to keep in mind, I mean, as far as my people, uh, because I'm working my way through Whitney Webb's book, even though whatever, she protected Kennedy, which is beyond me. But, uh, you know, (laughs) we have a lot of... uh, interesting folks coming out of Harvard that are in this very and strange uh, black mill, a black male uh, milieu. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And so there's some money going on with Mitt Romney's father in particular. Uh, and there's some weird wow. connections with uh, Elder Bush and Mitt Romney's father. So I, I want to see how far back oh. the money goes. That's what I want to see. Oh, yeah. I'm going to try and recite this. And I watched this channel the other day. I mean, it was a three hour documentary. Well done documentary. 
whether it's true or not, I'm just going to tell you what I, what I saw. And so what they said was that, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, Alistair Crowley or whatever. He's Bar Barbara Bush's freaking dad or something. <laughs> and I'm like, what? I don't yeah. believe that. People have tried to tell me that that's true. Oh I don't God. believe it like whatsoever. I've had people tell me and I'm like, you know what? God bless and good luck because <laughs> I don't have time for it. Like, I mean, I'm but hey, I mean, it is a elaborate freaking, I mean, it wasn't just about that, but I mean, it just kind of went through the whole thing. And I was like, damn, <laughs> it's crazy. See, we don't ever The know. interesting thing about Aleister Crowley is that he was British intelligence. Hmm. And so... Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Jack Parsons. He's, I've heard of him. You know, the person yeah, who with created all that. Jet Fuel, supposedly, right? Um, you know, <laughs> he wrote to Jack Parsons mm -hmm. when Jack Parsons was really into Thelema, the sex magic, doing Libre, all that stuff in the desert, Libre, right? Never. Getting weird. Mm -hmm. He said, stop. He said, that's dirt. He said, you're too smart and it's going to kill you. Crowley knew that it was garbage. It was a way to manipulate people. That was his job. Same with Madame Blavatsky. There's mm. people that don't want to hear that. But the I've reality that, is uh, that oh. were intelligence assets and they were sent in to do these things. And it's this is as no, Ballard. like yeah. little groups, manipulating groups, and then mm -hmm. things get out of control. And again, I'm not saying that there are th not things in the unseen that cause harm that these people believe in i'm not saying that at all i don't screw right. around with it i don't want to know i want to stay right here where i'm at you know <laughs> what i mean but the reality is is that the roots of it it'll be blamed is, on that yeah but it's but the roots of it that. is intelligence that's what right. it is it's intelligence is, it's yeah. power it's manipulation it's not some random weirdo out in the middle of nowhere doing witchcraft rubbing two sticks together saying a chant that's just well, not that's what, what it Joseph is Smith did. Except he held two sticks and, you know, he was, he was a treasure hunter, digger, whatever. He was a gypsy. He, he was, you know, a grifter of his day. And, and I mean, so the, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. I mean, Chad Daybell sitting there doing a pendulum, uh, raiding my family and my lineage and everything, whether they're light or dark, whether they lived or died, basically. Um, and my mom was on that list too. So they, they gave her her demon name and everything. <laughs> Rhonda. Okay. I mean, these people are sick and sadistic. And I'm, I, I, I don't, I'm glad I got to hear. I'm just so glad I got to hear. Cause I mean, it, it makes all the sense in the world as to what's going into this, how they're connected. I don't know. I, I don't know that I'll never really know that who all was involved in, in the actual rituals in the actual murders. I, I will never know that either because but that tells me there's so many more people that do know that have just sat here and watched this play out they love chaos this is what we're giving them is chaos you know um and i just don't want to be part of it anymore uh, i don't want them to have that power over and dictate every little thing anymore um and that'll soon you know come to an end here especially in idaho i'm really ready to move on to arizona you know for the next murder trial but i mean just so you whenever you say like this started with um i never can charles manson i mean that makes a lot of sense that's wasn't he like one of the first cults or whatever so with the process in particular um you know, and I have to come back to Manson. There's some complicated things with that case, and I want to do my due diligence. But mm -hmm. they broadcast that in the papers and on the news to traumatize the public. So just like you said, how it's like the news is constantly like traumatizing mm -hmm. us and desensitizing yeah. us. I believe that what happened at Cielo Drive, you know, what they did in particular to a pregnant woman and her child uh, and the way that her husband reacted at the time. I'm yeah. not here yeah. to debate the particulars, but well, I know that because that of you. Was, yeah, <laughs> that was to traumatize mm -hmm. the public. 
Because then what do we see happen? Not only does the process start heading towards uh, all the horrific stuff that's going on in Canada, uh, also the Son of Sam and eventually Atlanta, but in the interim, near all of the very obscure MK Ultra universities, we have all the other serial killers of the 70s coming out, like Edmund Kemper. Ed uh, Bundy was a Mormon. Did you know that? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. And actually, yeah. uh, Lynn Packer interviewed or whatever. He was covering that trial back in that back in the day. And that's crazy. I, I've been watching uh, Program to Kill. I'll, uh, thank you for turning me on to that Hell book. Hell yeah. <laughs> it's written by David. Hell yeah. Uh, that's Mag awesome. Uh, David McGowan. Yeah. David yes, McGowan. In 2004, in he wrote this book, y'all. And I mean, I wish he was still alive. Whistleblower, right? Oops. Me too. He, yeah. But I mean, just holy crap, you know, I mean, I haven't even finished it yet, but I'm just like, oh my God, you know, it's the same sauce over and over and over and over and over again. And um, it makes the, it makes perfect sense, but oh my God. That's yeah. Nice. But yeah, so there's a YouTube channel that has like so many different. I guess basically Dave McGowan's work or whatever program to kill. Um, and they just put clips and whatever goes with it. And I'm just like, wow, it blows my mind. Um, I don't know. I do want to ask if anybody has any questions for you. Um, okay. We'll see. Traumatize the public and take away our rights because of the fear they create. Yeah. And I mean, even studying into Mormonism, their beliefs and everything, and how they have the three celestial, I mean, uh, the three heavens, basically. They have the the top tier where all the elites will go, right? And um, then the second tier, and then um, where, anyways. And then the bottom tier is basically with all the pedophiles and the murderers. and But then even they get to have a chance to redeem themselves and, and re, you know, move up. You know, it's an MLM, <laughs> MLM heaven. And so basically, um, whenever I noticed that, you know, I was like, okay, yeah, but what else is going on here? You know, cause I'm not Mormon. I've never been a Mormon. My family was Mormon. I love all people. Don't get it twisted. Like she says, yeah, don't, don't absolutely. I love all people. It just so happens. This was my introduction into the book of Mormon. Blame it on them, you know, but, but what I kind of noticed was this pattern or like this conditioning of getting used to this tiered system where you're graded and rated according to what you're doing right now. Cause this is in the here and now that's, that's what this is anyways. And so they're preparing for the quote unquote second coming, which is the new world, new Jerusalem, <laughs> Zion. That's all that stuff. That's all the stuff that, I know I've read in Mormonism and all the stuff that is touted by Melanie Gibb, David Warwick, Lori Vallow, Chad Daybell, all these people. Okay. And, but they're all working. And I always sit there and I'm like, knowingly or not, I don't know who to, I don't see Chad's not a freaking elite. I'll tell you that right now. I mean, gross. I don't even know why, why they picked up the phone and called him because uh, anyways, duped probably. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. But uh, so what they're it just I don't know this pattern where it's just like, okay, I can see where they're conditioning the Mormon people to get into this thinking where I mean I've seen in chat uh in blog rooms and or forums and stuff, these Mormons talking, you know, um about how they're going to administer as angels in heaven. They're talking about heaven. But they're talking about how they're going to go, how they're basically, they're planning out their afterlife. And so I'm just like, wow, these people are like, whoa, you know, I mean, that's how controlled this group is. And, and so much so that they're planning even what they're going to do and not do in the afterlife. And it's just like, it's sad. It's really sad. But uh, it made me think about things like, um, like, just the conditioning and, and like the, the, you know, maybe the social scoring system that's going to be coming out. I'm sure we already have the credit system, you know, based on your credit report and things like that. But very, it's very like, um, 
there's a movie called End Time. It's got Justin Timberlake in it, and I forget the girl's name, Amanda something, see, whatever. And so, like, you just go through different wards, so to speak, of, you know, like the poor people are with the poor people in class. It goes according to class, basically. And it's just like, ew, ew, it's just, it's scary. I mean, not scary. It's just, hmm, you know. <laughs> They just want to be God. But all right. Jean Marie says, uh, what do you mean? Uh, the Manson murders were publicized to traumatize the public. I lived. I lived that and it was traumatizing. What is your angle? Please enlighten me. Well, uh, Jean Marie, hello. And I'm sorry that uh, you lived through that. I'm not saying that it wasn't. And I'm not saying that it was manufactured. I'm saying mm -hmm. that they put that on such a public scale and humiliated mm -hmm. all of the victims to traumatize the public. Um, I've discussed in some of my research, you know, so Sharon and Abigail Folger, they were seen by multiple witnesses at the Esalon Institute leading up to the time of the murders. Um, and then, you know, the Manson family was apparently at the Esalon Institute shortly before the murders as well. Uh, the Esalon Institute put out a book where they claim that any connections being made were a black PR campaign from the White House against Esalon. So that's really insane to me uh, because things like that where, and especially in a completely different time, right? Like I wish that I was around back then. The music was certainly freaking better. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Um, but that literally was an operation, whether people want to use that word or not. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that what happened to those people what was happened is real and yeah. that it wasn't horrific. Just like with them, it's it, real. <laughs> but it serves a purpose. Mm -hmm. It serves a purpose for the for the slave masters. It serves mm -hmm. a purpose. And what was the purpose? To make people scared and to make right. people docile. And also they were realizing that their Tavistock chickens were coming home to roost because they were mixing up meth with acid and that's what oh they God. were giving the family and that whole situation is extremely complicated so i'm not saying that the trauma isn't real it is very real and i think that the trauma still goes on today and i think that they still do it to us today with true crime and that's why i hate true crime I, I, mm, right here right yeah and i mean these stories get played over and over and over again and i mean part of me is like thankful about that and grateful because not everybody even gets this opportunity to to you know to have all of america looking for your loved ones some people don't even get that um mm -hmm. so i'm blessed our family's blessed in that sense but then there's another there's just like with everything else there's another side to it that is a whole nother form and and re-victimization of trauma and, and reliving all this stuff, not just in the trials, but in the media, YouTube, all the content, they become content and not everybody appreciates and values or sees it this way. Some people are out there just like, Hey, another day, another dollar. And, and you know, they're, mm -mm. and so it, it's like, there's a fine line. It's a very fine line between advocating and and telling their stories and then just doing it just to you know get popularity views clicks money it all it all goes back to money you know so well, i'm not a fan of people profiting off of the pain of others right. and uh you know that's why uh, if people check out my stuff, uh, don't get me wrong. Uh, there's some crying on there, okay? Because I do get very emotional. Oh, yeah. I get very invested in a lot yeah. of stuff. Like even it's like crazy. Sharon Tate. Like yeah. there's a video where I'm literally bawling my eyes out in the <laughs> middle of the night because I had to tell everybody what I had just found because I have You're some human. really crazy stuff about mm -hmm. the process. But like 
I take these things seriously because I believe that these people's stories deserve to be told. Damn what true crime says. Damn what the history book says. Yeah. Because they lie to us. That's their job is to lie to us. Over and over oh, again. Hey, Lodge. Yeah. That's my OG. And I to know. shut down the hippie movement. That is yeah. absolutely right, my friend. Yep. That was the other purpose of the it, Manson crime. Either way, absolutely. it's to control the narrative. That's what it is. It's to I control mean, the herd. That's what it is. Um, and so it makes sense, you know, that all these distractions, like, I feel like something's coming too, you know, and I'm just like, hmm, you know, cause you start just it seeing is. things kind of pop up in your peripheral and you're just like, huh, wonder what they're doing and why. <laughs> and then you try to, you know, just keep on keeping on, but it, it, I don't know, something's building. They use keyword, uh, code words, buzzwords or whatever. Um, you know, there's Glenn Beck who's, I, I've really think that glenn beck and tim ballard are brother law brother-in-laws um i think that tim ballard's wife Catherine, is sisters with glenn beck's wife you know glenn beck lives in idaho over there where my family was murdered half half my family <laughs> and then you know i mean there's just so many there's frank vandersloot over there who actually owns east idaho news who will be airing streaming my family's murder trial, you know, like, oh my God, Frank Vandersloot allegedly tried to stop Adam Steed. Y'all, you, my, my people know who Adam Steed is, the whistleblower from, you know, Boy Scouts of America and that whole thing. And then he's kind of a whistleblower again here in this Jody Hildebrandt stuff of how the Mormon church, you know, is actually um, referring its members to this this goes hand in hand with what you found but they're referring their members to mormon approved therapists who then they diagnose the the member or whatever their their um client or whatever uh with um sexual addiction which is not in the dsm but these people are just like oh no i'm an addict i'm masturbate and oh my god you know and tearing all these I families think up people like shalom leave then, it for that right right that shalom love it yes uh and then and then the church pays for it and i'm just like how did they get away with this <laughs> and, and you know david hamlin he was a mormon therapist who administered peyote in in some of his or in his ceremonies he's even found a loophole you know, down there with uh, James Moody, um, with the whole Oklahoma, I don't even know how to say it, uh, Oklahoma, uh, anyways, but they found a loophole where they can um, kind of say that they're Native American or whatever, so that they can administer, okay. so they can have yeah. the buttons on them and, and can mm -hmm. administer it. And I'm just like, these people exploit every thing in everybody that's Esalon, though that's what Esalon does that's literally what Esalon does that Here is their, that is what they do is they teach people how to infiltrate tribes and mm. they figure out those loopholes in the laws and wow. they try to bring those practices here and it is that's why the whole like whatever some people don't like it like joe rogan limited hangout where he's like oh i do dmt and i smoke weed that's that's esalon that is esalon that is them training you so that John when they Lilly. bring it out and they sell it to you with a little uh barcode that yeah. you'll go oh this is good for me. No, it's not. That's mm -hmm. not what it is. They just say is it is. Which <laughs> right. is Tavistock. Yeah. It's all Tavistock and Esalon, yeah. unfortunately. But I mean, literally, Shalom works for Esalon. So yeah. <laughs> that's yes. a direct and for, Brigham, and for Brigham Young University. Yeah. You know, when they're not living in their big honking castle over there in, in Scotland. <laughs> yeah. A whole castle. Y'all, a whole castle. That they definitely did not buy to get closer to <laughs> Nicholas Oliverdi. No, yeah, Ross. they didn't. Nope, yeah, they did. Not at all. Nope. Mm -mm. <laughs> oh, nope, my God. one bit. I'm looking for your little Joe Rogan. Um, oh, here's your. Yeah, here it is. Let me see. Tavistock Magic. Let me get it pulled up here and I'm going to share it. <laughs> <laughs> Let me share it. I'm going to hide us behind the thing. Oh, okay. Hold on. Let me do this first. <laughs> Sorry, I'm slow. All right. And uh oh, 
<laughs> I'm lost. I have too many tabs open. Okay. All right. I'm on there. So one day, StreamYard will have it to where you'll know. This is the story of DMT, or dimethyltryptamine. A simple compound found throughout nature, which has profound effects on human consciousness. that's nuts all right let me get us out of here <laughs> all right yeah oh okay Where? where's my double sorry it was hiding okay no, it's okay <laughs> no <laughs> i'm on the handle right here one day i'll hook my stream deck up I don't know. I've had it in a box for a year. <laughs> Just sitting there. That's my uh, that's my agitation propaganda. That's how I yeah. try to propagandize people is uh, through that. It was worth not monetizing. I'm not monetizing this video. So it's just going to stay off because they're just going to say no anyway. So I'm like, it's worth it, though. Yeah. Thank this you. This is Donna. Dana's YouTube channel. And she's got her link tree. I have everything in the description box down below, too. And I don't know. I just I think. You know, this is basically our first real conversation about all this stuff. And it's it's just um, it goes far and wide and it's it reaches everybody. And um, it, it kind of it really sucks to know that your family or my family, I say your family, my family is part of the tragic loss, the reality of it. These things did happen their murders did occur but for them to be basically a conspiracy theory to the world to know the truth you know i mean that's what it is or just them experimenting or them just using it as a cover to do really dark shit you know it just for what you know for what money I power sex that, i think that you are doing not you're not only honoring their memory but i think that you're doing a very difficult and very loving thing by putting yourself out there and seeking mm. the truth and showing people that it's not a fucking joke that this has okay. real life consequences that there is real life harm and that people you're showing mm. people the importance in real time of not falling for the propaganda and asking the questions and it is a huge learning curve, but, you know, showing people just like I do, you know, to not be afraid of that learning curve and being willing to like have the tough conversations, read the weird books, go on the yeah. adventure, you know, it is Trust a learning adventure that, that we're all going on together. Mm -hmm. But I think that what you're doing is probably one of the most important things that I have seen done because it is something that people paint as a conspiracy. And like the, when we talked last week, like that shit had me in tears. And I'm just like, because it is different when you're talking to someone who is a loved one in real time, who yeah. is literally being infected by it right now. I mean, I cry about Sharon Tate from the freaking sixties, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And it's like, this is now, and these are babies, you know, yeah. and these are people that you love. And so it's, 
I, like I said, I mean, I think that you are honestly doing like the public a huge service and people aren't going to like it. But guess what? Right. There's people that don't like, ev you know, everything. And it is what it is. It doesn't take away the mm -hmm. importance. of. I'm it, not here to be I mean. liked. It's not to be liked. It's just to share the difficult research. That's what gave this channel its yeah, name. I think that you picked a perfect yeah. name. I think it's an <laughs> I didn't awesome even know name. what I was walking into. <laughs> I was just no, like, okay. I think, I think cool. it was a brilliant name. When I saw it, I was like, oh, she clever. <laughs> <laughs> I, named, I named one of my playlists as that and I was like what can I name my channel <laughs> Duh, right well and I mean it proves itself over and over again all these cases when all these experts all these people on these panels are talking about my family's case they always say difficult also I've noticed that I'm just like is you can't get around it you know you got to get through it to get to it you know you, there is no going enough going around things you know, when I was in Boise for Lori's trial last year, this time last year, there's mountains, you know, and, um, and so I was doing a live stream and I was like, you know, all the things that gets brushed under the rug, they, they turn into these mountains, you know, and you, you can't move them. You, you can't, you know, and it's, um, it's time to break the, the, the chain, break the cycle. And, um, just educate yourself. I'm not asking you anybody here to take everything that was said here anytime today or any other time. Do your own research. They hate that. They do not want you to do your own research because then you become an informed citizen of the war of this of this uh, nation. Just like how Grant Palmer, I heard him say it. He's a he was a Mormon. And he was like, an informed Mormon is to be, uh, is soon to be an ex-Mormon. And I'm just like, oh, wow. So, I mean, it's the same concept. Um, you know, we're not dumb. And I I'm really tired of, you know, people like uh, Massimo Intervini or whatever. And people like that, like Lucian Greaves, uh, people dumbing us down. We're not dumb. Children especially are not dumb. They're like sponges. Right. How many, like I said, how many of you have cussed in front of your kids or your grandkids? They are sponges. And I mean, to sit there and discount a victim, especially a child victim's retelling of their trauma. They sent these people in to do counter, uh, be counterproductive to, to do this. I mean, it's what they're doing and it, it causes chaos it causes controversy and conspiracies and it causes these cases to never make it to court these people and that means that these people never get held accountable that means that these people continue to prey on us and our children especially our children so that's mm -mm, nope <laughs> I'm, I'm not the dog's not gonna hunt anymore and um you know, we're smart people and we just need to trust our guts, our instincts. They're, they're for, for the most part, they're pretty right. You know, it, like I said, it's a whole system. Your, your intuition, your brain, your, uh, your senses, you know, you, God gave you all these gifts and all these things and tools, use them, you know? So it's crazy. Eslon is nuts, Gene. <laughs> But um, yeah, Esalon's a hellscape. It's a real uh, hellscape. Elizabeth Russell says the point Dana made that many uh, that many MK Ultra researchers have made is that the Manson murders and other similar events, such as the JFK assassination, were atten intended to traumatize the public. It goes what well, I was saying, and also right? that MK Ultra researchers, uh, the majority that I have seen, don't show the real horrors like, like the mcclaries have you know helped me with like jolly west uh literally trying to put brain chips into young black children to predict violence um this is in a senate congressional hearing mm -hmm. uh but they those were things that they were already doing and who do you think that they were doing it to foster kids kids yeah. off the street things of that nature I'm not on paper uh, that, that's the real mk ultra you know it's not it's not all just the hippie stuff um but the McClaries, their their blog is a wealth of knowledge in regards to that. And I have videos on that as well. Um, I just, that's the uncomfortable part of 
you mm-hmm. know, the history that it's people the reality of it. Of it's the reality of it. And it needs to be told. We have to yeah. get comfortable talking about uncomfortable things. I've said that here so many times. <laughs> What's the name yeah. of their blog? Do you know? Or... Oh, uh, it's I think if you Google <laughs> McClary's blog, it should come up. It should be the first one. Uh, let me I can't chat oh, from all that. Because I'm banned, I can't chat with the chat. So someone <laughs> else is going to have to find it. Um, but if someone else can, that would be great. Oh, you're banned from my chat? Oh. I'm banned on YouTube, period. <laughs> girl, I can't you... do anything. They put me in yeah. time out. Bad girl. You need to wear a dunce cap and be like, I'm going to do it again. <laughs> I'm <laughs> definitely going to do it again. It's my second time since July. If so. not, she's got a Rumble channel and she's on Twitter. And I don't Instagram. use Rumble though. I know, but we're gonna have to because of things like this. Because I, I mean, I have um, I have a backup. It's a whole nother platform, but I pay for it. I pay for it, but I don't ever use it. So I'm just like you. Got to start resourcing and and moving out. You know, these because yeah. these these people, these psychos, they are just like. I'm just like, oh my God, I can't keep up. Oh my God. <laughs> and and they're just so quick back on the feet. And I'm just like, Jesus, do you ever take any downtime? You know, no rest no. for the wicked, right? <laughs> it's Yeah, it's all connected. Yeah. But I do appreciate you coming on and sharing with us. You know, I think that in future, in the future, we'll be able to talk more about this. I really want to see how Chad's trial transpires i want to see if if the court was actually or the prosecution was actually holding back on everything because Lori went first because chad's a chivalrous guy in that sense <laughs> he's like here you go push you under the bus okay and you know and then here he is and it makes me wonder is Lori going to testify in behalf of him you know i did get a vine a while back or a vine notification you know just reminding us i guess that she's still uh, in the doc in idaho and i'm just like right but she's in she's still i don't know how they did it but she went to prison over in idaho but then they extradited her down to arizona and so i don't know they still have i guess her mail her mailing address is over there i don't know she's gonna go back there which i found interesting she was supposed to be uh death penalty also but I believe this is me and my conspiracy all day, every day. I believe that, you know, they deemed her incompetent, you know, because she wouldn't also maybe conform to the story. And it was just maybe a reminder of what you're supposed to do, girl. And so, mm-hmm. I, cause I was like, she's not crazy. She's not that kind of crazy. She's crazy. All right. But she's not that kind of crazy. So, yeah. Um, anyways. And I mean, there's, the church basically stepping in using by way of their powerful attorneys, Kurt McConkie and all their NDAs, you know, the non just, Oh my God, these people in the NDAs, it's, it's a letter agency thing for sure. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. I, but I hope that this really comes out with a lot more information. Time will tell. And, um, you know, we'll just, pick up and keep going like we've been doing this whole time anyway. So, you know, the, the prosecutor, the prosecutor is not there to tell the story. Um, not, not the entire story. They're there to nail a conviction and have that notch in their belt, you know, to that's their career. This is what they do. And so while I appreciate them, on the other hand, remember when I, I told you about Rob Wood and about the whole um, how when JJ's remains came back, um, my mom sent me a picture of her and Larry mm-hmm. in bed, you know, with JJ in the middle of them. And I was just like, oh, but then I looked at the picture again and I, I zoomed in on it and it said wood crematorium or something like that. And I was like, what? Uh, Rob, like Rob Wood? You know, I mean, is that family owned or what? And and so, yeah, kind of. Mm hmm. And, um, and then you looked it up that night and you were just, the names didn't match. And so that's just, anyways, it's just one of those things that, you know, we haven't had a chance to really dive into, but it, I don't know. It just makes me wonder. (laughs) 
I'm just, I'm curious like that. I'm so curious. We'll come back to it. You got a big list of names to to give me. We're going to come back. I I overthink things too, which is why you haven't got a list. (laughs) And I'm just like, what do I put on there? You know, I want to put what they do and what they're connected to, but then that's me overcomplicating things a great deal. (laughs) But I don't know. I really think that, you know, the story is to be told. We know the end. We, We know the result. We know the results of all these other cases, all these other lives, human life, that not just the victims. I mean, oh, my God. Yes, the, that's what this is about. But that ripple effect that continues to just, I mean, it just goes on and on and on. It is traumatizing. I mean, all the way down to even people who follow the cases. You guys are being traumatized. And this and desensitized too. And I mean, what does that make for kind of like with, um, you know, how they were saying uh, are worried about kids playing the video games with all the shoot them up bang bangs, you know? And I mean, I know. so we're, we're kind of, you know, we're in this world where I don't know how to unplug. I don't know how to, th- I can't turn it off. I'm just like, what, <laughs> you know, but I felt like I've been under a time crunch too with all the trials and, Anyways, and I've known all this kind of stuff for a while. Not not all that stuff. You you blew my mind. You know, I, you continue to blow my mind. I suggest all you guys go and, and check her out and subscribe and show love and support. And um, that way she can do her thing. She does this as a hobby. This is just, you know, the the soul searcher in her. And um, but I really do appreciate you taking the time to come and visit with me in my my community. Um, and uh, we are gonna do this again. I hope. <laughs> oh yeah! Thanks yeah? for having it's me. It's a date. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll definitely be back. Yeah, we'll we'll come at it and we'll get real particular with everything. Right, and she will too. And you'll just be like, I didn't want to know. I don't want to know all this. <laughs> and then you, you I'm very like, good well, what at else? making people regret uh, <laughs> and requesting the previous five minutes. Back. But you're boom, 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 and y'all, I get all stuck on my words and everything. So she's just like bam, 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 and and then you're just like, wow. Okay, I feel like, you know, I, I need a peppermint on my pillow at least or something, you know, <laughs> uh, something, bam, <laughs> bam. Thank so, you. Uh, but I, I love the way you deliver those things and, and just, it's just matter of fact, you know, you do what you will with the research, everybody that, you know, that you're presenting to, it's our jobs to do whatever we're wanting out of it, you know, whatever we're wanting to find out. So anyways, but um oh i'm gonna say bye everybody we're gonna go ahead and call it a night we gotta wake up in the well i gotta wake up in the morning me and the mods wake up tomorrow morning and um we're gonna go live at it's 8 30 court starts 8 30 um a.m mountain time uh from the ada county courthouse i'm gonna be um nine 9 15 ish here central so that'll be 10 15 eastern all right, do the time zones because <laughs> I don't I can't it. do it all. But um, I appreciate if you guys will, you know, join me. I'll be in the chat. I'm not going to be on screen because I'll be making faces and stuff. <laughs> and um, yeah, so um, I know my, you know, like my mom and them will be there later in the in the time. I don't want to give the exact date, but. Anyways, um, jury selection starts tomorrow for the Chudster, right? April Fool's Day, right? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Um, and then there's John Pryor who did that whole whatever the hell that was. He did an interview with a local station. And I'm just like, you know, wasn't he bitching about, like, taint- tainting the, the jury pool? And I'm just like, what are you doing, dum-dum? Yeah, the real conspiracy is... People want to know is is uh, John Pryor Chad Daybell's relative <laughs> down the way, right? But anyways, mm-hmm. all right, guys. Well, um, justice for Tylee Charles, Tammy, JJ, and Joe. And as always, love always wins. Bye, guys. Oh, and we're literally fighting demons. Okay, we're out here fighting demons.